Hi everyone, are you worried for your ACC SBL exam in terms of what to do, how to do and how to get over with it? I have been receiving many queries with regards to the same as to what should be our study plan so that we can cover that more holistically and cover that end to end and really really attempt it in the best possible way. That is the reason my friend I made this video so that you can get to know all the secrets that you need for the purpose of clearing this exam in the best possible way. So here we go. For those who are here for the first time or watching me for the first time, let me introduce myself. But before I go in there, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon so that you get the first notification whenever we issue any such videos with relation to ACCA. You can now also subscribe to our Telegram channel by the name Pentram Global just to get all the job opportunities available for ACCAs across the world, my friend. Moving on to my introduction. My name is Pankaj Dhingra and I'm a qualified chartered accountant and a CPA from US. And of course, not to forget, I'm a proud Fintrammer. Yes, my friend. I have been working for various corporates since last two decades, namely Cargill Foods, Wipro, Boston Consulting and BlackRock. I have headed various finance organizations in, in, these, in these companies and of course have worked at various levels in relation to handling not only finance but also the other domains. I have been teaching since last two decades in addition to the job that I have been handling in various corporates and I have taught globally the Chartered Accountancy, the CPA for US and ACCA. What I am here for today is to take you through what exactly you need to know from your SBL, SBL preparation standpoint. Many of the times and I can tell you many of the times the query that I generally receive from many of the students is that SBL exam is tough or SBL exam is very tough. Can you tell me sir? We have been hearing a lot that you know SBL exam is like giant, the beast and what not. All I can tell you my friend is if you really go the way I am thinking about it, the way I really understand this exam, this exam is the most, most commonsensical exam and the logical exam across the world. It really doesn't warrant you to cram up the things. It doesn't really warrant you to really mug up the things and know the concept in detail. No, it really needs you to be a logical individual professional who is able to demonstrate the application skill of whatever he has learned by now onto this onto the case or onto the real life scenario that is what this exam is all about i want to relieve you my friend from the burden that this exam is really really tough no my friend this is not like that this exam is not tough but style of this exam the way it is being asked and the way it needs to be answered is something needs to be learned and something needs to be relished all i can tell you all i can tell you is that you need to relish the way the examiner is asking this, the, these questions and the way you should be answering that. I'm pretty sure, you know, you will be, you'll be good, you know, I would say in a good position or, or well prepared in terms of, you know, what do we have, what we have as a strategy over here, what you should be following. Alrighty, moving on for the sake of, you know, ease and, and grasping this material in the best possible way. What we have done is we have divided the entire uh, study plan that we will be discussing into two specific sessions. Part one will be covering the exam structure and the content. Can you have anything more important than this in terms of your preparation? No, my friend. This is the most, most important pillar that you should be knowing from the standpoint of preparing for an exam. Absolutely. Then we'll move on to the exam marking scheme. Now, SBL exam has a very different marking scheme. I tell you why. Because over here, you are only supposed to write an exam for 80 marks. Really? Yes, and we'll get into the detail as to what it is and you know, you'll, you'll get to know as to what I'm telling and of course, we'll, we will discuss on that. Then we will also touch upon, you know, and, and deep dive into various syllabus areas that we have. So, you know, we have A to H syllabus areas in SBL and many of the students, I can tell you with what all experiences I've had and the feedback that I've had, 
many of the students they do not really follow the syllabus areas. So we'll of course we'll talk on that in terms of you know what those syllabus areas are and of course what the content is. That is something that we'll be covering today and the, as we move forward to next week and we'll cover the part two, we will be covering in terms of you know what do we really need to entail to really target this exam in the most possible and the best possible way, which is what kind of time and effort that you should, you should be spending on each of these business areas, which we'll, we'll be talking on that too. And of course, we'll talk on the professional skills and its application in terms of you know what should we do be doing or how should you be targeting your professional skills and then we will also target the importance of the formats in the ASVEL exam. We will get into the more details as to what I am talking right now but we will certainly touch upon this topic as to what is the importance of the format and last but not the least is something which is the fever of the season which is like what exactly we really need to know from the SBL CBE standpoint, the computer based exam standpoint, what should we be doing, how should we be preparing and so on and so forth. So we will also touch upon that so that your preparation my friend is more 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 holistic and end to end in terms of dealing with anything and everything. Is that clear? Yes sir. Should we move forward? Yes sir. All right. Moving on to my friend the exam structure. What is the exam structure for SBL? It is a 4 hour exam my friend. Now these are very basic basic things my friend and many of the students you know at times uh, just because this is very basic they tend to ignore it or then tend to forget it or they do not uh, wanting or willing to spend too much of time in terms of thinking on these basic steps. But all I can tell you is that just because we do not concentrate on these small small things we end up getting like you know 46, 47, 48, 49 over there and we do not we are not able to get like 50 marks to clear this exam and that is where the problem gets in. So we should be spending time in terms of you know discussing as to you know all those basic nuances and of course that will be the foundation that we will have on which we can really build the empire that we really need to and of course you know capitalize that to really clear this exam and that is what we will be doing and that is what we will be targeting at. Alright this is the 4 hour exam we effectively have 240 minutes, 240 minutes and you really have to spend 60 minutes in the reading. You have to spend 45 to 60 minutes in terms of reading the question because reading the question is a is a task that you really need to do because it's a long, long, long question and soon we'll get into it as to what that is. It is one integrated study, my friend. You get a one integrated case study. If, you know, it, it can be a scenario wherein a company is dealing with a particular requisition, can be a scenario wherein company is dealing with a particular uh, proposal or can be a scenario wherein you are dealing with some kind of a people issue and what not or some kind of technological implementation or a mix of it. So it can, they can give you a mix of various situations being given in one integrated case study and then he will ask you, he will ask you about various uh, questions in regards to what will you do if you would have been that sit in, in that situation. That is the, that is the essence of the as well exam because it effectively warrants you to steps into the, step into the shoes of that particular person and start answering basis what you would do in that particular situation and that's the that's the uh, that's something that i was saying that you should always relish in terms of you know how this exam is being uh, uh, being made up all right coming on to uh, uh, you know we generally have like 10 to 15 pages of case study and uh, that is the reason i always say that you have to spend like 45 to 60 minutes because you takes time it really takes time to understand the nuance and it really takes time to understand what exactly you need to read and how exactly you should be going forward to answering those questions. So that is something that will be, you know, that is something that is that is super important. Again, there are 8 to 12 questions and of course, depending upon, you know, what examiner really intend to ask you that point in time, but there are 8 to 12 questions at minimum to that he really just asks you and all are mandatory, my friend. There is no, no, no options available. There are, there, you have to answer anything and everything that you get to see in the exam. So very important. All right. He may give you what? He may give you a board minute. A spreadsheet, annual report, survey, proposal and what not. SBL exam is famous and very very uh, peculiar in terms of giving you various formats because they really warrant you and want you as the senior business leader to know those formats, to know those uh, specific nuances that are being played in an organization and what not. So it's more like they really want you to be prepared with all of these uh, formats in terms of reading them and analyzing them and you should be knowing as to where to get what information from. So they effectively test you in terms of the are you are you really aware in terms of you know dealing with these kind of formats or not. So that is something that is being there and that is something that is being tested. So we'll of course you know uh, that is something that you really have to take care when you are you know thinking about any syllabus area and planning about any syllabus area from the examination standpoint. 
coming on to the last point wherein i i already mentioned that that he will give you a position he'll give you a role to play it can be a role of a ceo cfo head of a function audit manager external consultant a junior team member and what not he'll give you a various number of roles uh, to be played in, the, in an integrated case study which you really have to pick up and start answering getting into that role as to what that role would do in that scenario in that philosophy of of the scheme of the things that he's observing that point in time so that is the important thing that you really need to know and the more you'll uh, uh, of course go through the syllabus area and the practice the questions the more you'll get to know in terms of you know what i'm talking about right now at this point in time important for us to know is that what is the structure and what is the content of the exam if you are not aware of the content of the exam my friend how can you really prepare for it in the best possible way you tell me that is the premise and that is the starting point for any preparation anyone would do for any exam forget about sbl and that's what we are doing first important point is to know as to what the content is and what the structure is and what is the third law logical step marking scheme my friend what is the marking scheme and it has a unique marking scheme and i really want to talk on that sbl has a unique marking scheme what is that sbl exam in the sbl sbl exam you only have to write for 80 marks 20 marks are being given how you write that 80 marks that is the big difference that you would have seen in any exams that you would have handled by now 80 marks for what you write and 20 marks are for how you write that is the uniqueness of the sbl exam and that is the reason many of the students struggle at times because they tend to forget this 20 marks they tend to forget that they really need to work on these 20 marks as far as learning these professional skills so 20 marks are for displaying and sharing and of course uh, you know somewhere putting across various professional skills that examiner really wants you to do which is nothing but the communication skill the commercial acumen the analysis the skepticism and evaluation so they have the five professional skills that you really need to demonstrate in terms of how you write any examination answer and that is where you are ranked 20 marks 20 marks is huge and can make a c difference in terms of you clearing this exam or not and that is the reason this is something super 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 important my friend not to miss we will be covering that in the part 2 in terms of you know how you should be addressing that we have covered at length you know in terms of these professional skills we have covered at length in our sessions also in terms of the sbl sessions that we have in terms of giving you a perspective as to what you really need to know from the professional skill standpoint and of course when we practice and we give our video question marathon we have given and taken all of these skills and applied it into a question so that you get the perspective as to how you do do it all right moving ahead now we really need to know what this syllabus area is we have understood the content sir the structure sir and we have also understood the marking scheme sir let's get on to the syllabus my friend we have the a to h syllabus area of sbl as in you know the a to h are like you know this the the big pillars that we have in terms of you know what we really need to cover from the sbl exam standpoint which is first one is leadership now you know if you really and you know of course when we'll we'll go through this journey in terms of you know what does it really entails us to become and clear and clear this sbl exam you will get to know that the syllabus area is being structured as such that they'll give you anything and everything that a real strategic business leader would need and that's what the entire curriculum is all about and that's the beauty of it that's the that's something that one should relish because this they are not preparing you only for the purpose of clearing this exam but they are really preparing you for the purpose of getting into any corporate because corporate really needs people like the ones who really demonstrate these skills leadership what is leadership they will you know the content of the syllabus area is they'll you know the the intention or the content of the syllabus area is that they'll give you the qualities of the leader that one would need to have so you really need to understand what is the what are the qualities of good leader the theories around the good leader they will of course tell you the culture of the organization which is something which is super important you really need to know how the culture of organization impact organization at large how you impact the culture of a culture of an organization and what not so you learn that and then we'll we'll touch upon you know how the professional and corporate ethics are important for an acca so you really need to know what kind of ethics and the professional ethics or the corporate ethics you need to have from the standpoint of becoming the strategic business leader and that's what they really want you to really inculcate from the leadership leadership standpoint 
and last but not the least are the various you know corporate frauds or the bribes that are happening so you'll touch base with various uh, scenarios in the exam also wherein he'll throw out to you in terms of your know, frauds that are happening and you really need to understand as to what you really need to do from the management and and, and covering and, and of course uncovering those frauds in terms of you know getting hold of it and, and whatnot so that's in nutshell you know what the leadership area is all about and of course you can get into onto the acca website and, and of course scan through in detail as to what this really really entails but for now important for you is that you have the idea as to what the leadership syllabus area is all about in terms of the coverage and in terms of the content that you really need to cover all right moving on to the governance my friend the second business area super 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 important from the examination standpoint generally you get to see one or two questions out of this area which is nothing but the corporate corporate governance of course this is the estimation and of course i have seen uh, from the past examination that they 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 test you this is not something that i'm guessing uh, from the precedent standpoint you generally have one to two you know questions out of this area he generally likes to test, test you on the directors on the reporting piece and on the governance governance corporate governance piece corporate governance is the major thing that we'll be covering in this in terms of you know what exactly it entails for you to really govern and manage the company at large and of course moving on to the committees in terms of you know what you really need to do from the committee standpoint so once you do the directors then comes the board of directors in terms of committees the board committees that you have you really need to understand what all committees we have the compositions the the role and the responsibilities and whatnot so we really need to understand on that and last but not the least is the reporting that corporate has to do to various stakeholders and of course understanding the stakeholders and whatnot is something that we'll be covering in governance which is super important for you as i said this is one of the heavily tested in an exam and that is something that we'll discuss in terms of you know what kind of time frame we believe we should be spending on that in the next session all id moving on to the strategy my friend if it is a question or a paper of a strategic business leader exam can it be a scenario that they don't ask you on strategy no right strategic business leader exam would always have something on the strategy for sure they will certainly try to understand from you as to what you really need to know or what you really need to understand from the strategic strategic perspective so they will ask you various things that you really need to address which is like they will ask you you know how are you assessing the environment that you're in environment the organization is in so it's like how do you assess that what kind of capabilities you have be it the the, the basic threshold capabilities or the, or the strategic capabilities and so on and so forth they will also test you on the strategic choices kind of choices you may have basis that organization and kind of action that you really bring in have to bring in from the strategy strategy standpoint as to what would you really do from the standpoint of implementing a strategy that's what in nutshell the entire entire strategy is all about and see the picture over here it's a very 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 logical picture demonstrating the strategy being made out and being worked out and of course being implemented to get the right result and you get the right uh, action and, and 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 the outcome of 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 the strategy that you really build in moving on to my friend the risk see what he's up to he's telling you to be the leader he's telling you to know the governance he's telling you to plan for the strategy and now he's telling you to plan for the risk my friend can you be a good strategically business leader without addressing the risk of an organization absolutely absolutely not you cannot be right that is what he wants you to do and learn wherein he really wants you to know what kind of risks are there for an organization identify those risks manage those risks try to assess those risks and mitigate those risks that's what the entire essence of the syllabus area is all about that's what you you whenever you're reading the syllabus area you have to have these aspects into mind that this is what is expected out of me this is what examiner would be looking at from me from the standpoint of risk and of course whatever you read from this theoretical standpoint you should be addressing that in these themes so that you're able to answer that and then give that back to the examiner what he really needs or what he really wants all right moving on to technology and data analytics see what he's doing leader governance strategy risk technology can you survive in the now as in the world nowadays without having a hang on technology absolutely not is technology impacting you absolutely yes that is the reason sbl has this that you really need to know what is the impact of technology on you what do you really need to understand from the system security controls and and, and cyber security perspective what kind of cyber risks are there because when you will be heading an organization when you will be dealing with an organization you really need to know as to how is that impacting how is that impacting your organization from the technology standpoint 
So when you're reading this, and of course we have covered it, that, you know, this at length in our syllabus, that's in our, in our sessions, you know, in terms of you know what it really entails, and of course with the help of various practical examples, the real life examples, including the androns of the world, including the the world comms of the world, discussing discussing all of that, so that you get the real time perspective as to what you really need to know from the failures or the controls or the risk standpoint and of course from the technology and data analytics standpoint. Data analytics is something which is very, very, very much in fashion now or very much in now. So you really need to spend time in terms of, you know, what that is and so on and so forth. So of course, that is something that you really need to cover from the technology, technology standpoint. All right, moving on to the organizational audit and control. Think, the, think your journey, my friend, just think your journey. Leadership, governance, strategy, risk, technology and now organizational control and audit. You should also know the controls and audit of your organization. You should know the internal controls. You should know the audit in terms of internal audit, external audit. You should know the compliances that you really need to work with. You should know the reporting that you really need to look for from the compliance or the governance or the control standpoint. Whenever you're reading the syllabus area, my friend, and of course you can deep, deep dive on it, you will get to see that, you know, this is the essence that you really have to have in your mind to ensure you have something like this as a checklist that the way I'm showing over here, uh, you know, in, in your mind, whenever you're thinking about the organizational control and practices. All right, moving on to the financial planning and decision making. Imagine my friend, we are really progressing high and high as high as possible to become a good strategic business leader. And for that, you really need to know the or financial planning and decision making in terms of, you know, it has to be in your blood and that's something that really they really want. They'll do the ratio analysis, the, the decision tree, the forecasting, and of course the expected value. You are not supposed to do calculations in this exam. Mostly you will always get the calculations being done. You only have to interpret it. You only have to interpret it and that's the key that's something that should always be aware that interpretation is the key and hence you should be really be aware of you know what the interpretation is all about and that would be the key that is something that you should always 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 strive towards when you're dealing with the syllabus area all right moving on to the last syllabus area my friend which is innovation and performance excellence now this is something you should always always have at at the back of your mind that there cannot be any strategic business leader or a good strategic business leader who has not given due emphasis onto the innovation or the excellence that he's supposed to bring in into the processes that he handles. And that's what the key is. That's what the entire essence is. And, he, and ACCA being, the, being one, of the, uh, one of the best uh, accounting bodies, they really want you to, to know what exactly it entails for you to be the good strategic business leader of the organization. And one of the important aspects is to know what the innovation and performance excellence is all about. So they'll touch upon various disruptions and we have spoken a lot in our sessions in terms of you know various disruptions happening in the industry right now at this point in time. Operational excellence in terms of you know how should you strive for it. And of course the change management piece. And last but not the least, how do you really manage the project? Again, project management is something that any individual at, at all the levels in an organization should be aware because projects are something very, very, very common and, and so I would say they are the, they're the breadth of an organization in terms of you know, how an organization really works and, and achieve various targets and various, uh, uh, I would say, uh, out, out, outcomes that they really want to achieve. That's it I wanted to cover from the syllabus area standpoint, my friend. And that's where I will, I will end the part one of, of, of this, uh, this journey that we are in, in terms of understanding how we should be targeting and preparing our study plan. This is something that we have covered today. So that's something that, that you should certainly, certainly be aware because it is super important, my friend, as I said, to really know these basic things understanding these exam content, understanding the exam structure, understanding how the exam is being marked, understanding what the syllabus area are, are the basic premise or the foundation for really the building that you really want to build on this. And it is super important, my friend, that you really know this in and out and follow this in and out. I can tell you many of the students that do not follow the syllabus area. In fact, many of the faculties also have not been following the you know, syllabus areas and that's where the struggle happens. Because if you do not follow the syllabus area and, and what we follow in our sessions, uh, you know, is absolutely, absolutely same the way ACCA gives the syllabus area. So we will go from A to H in terms of, you know, what exactly you need to cover and like what exactly ACCA mandates for you to really know. And that's what we have covered. In fact, what we cover is, of course, the video sessions, the video uh, sessions on, on, on each and every syllabus area. And then what we cover is the video question marathon 
wherein I myself do various questions on this exam. Uh, you know uh, what has come in the exam, what you know, what uh, what are exam standard questions and the concept questions, and of course demonstrating various skills that you need to have, applic applying various professional skills over there, just to let you know that this is how you should be addressing that, this is how you should be uh, writing the uh, writing the exam per se. Uh, you know, as far as these uh, these case studies are concerned, we also spend good amount of time in our sessions on the formats that you really need to know and of course the professional skills that you really need to know how to write how to read uh, how to write the exam is something the you know the i would say the basic premise of you know what we build in in our question marathon so as to give a, give you a full hang of what you really need to know from the examination examination standpoint that was it my friend i wanted to cover today as i said we'll uh, you know you if you have any queries any questions you know you can just comment on me in, in this video i'll be more than happy to include any of your comments or any specific area that you would want me to cover in my next video i'll be happy to include that so just comment that in this video and of course i'll be more than happy to really come back with a video next week to give you a complete insight of what you really need to do from the preparation preparation standpoint with that this is pankaj dingra signing off mm -hmm.